Hello, I'm Andrew Norman of AC Norman & Co Concertinas. We make all types of concertinas and have been in business since 1976. We recently made a couple of videos on entry-level concertinas. See the description below for the links to part one and part two. A lot of people buy one of these concertinas as their first instrument and unfortunately find there's quite a few faults and probably end up not playing the concertina as a result of having bought a cheap instrument. Our intention was to look objectively at these instruments and see what's wrong with them and also what could be done to improve them. All of these instruments were bought second hand so not surprised you needed some work but most of the faults that we were talking about are design, construction or the use of the wrong materials and just bad quality really. This one is a Stefanelli, made for clink scales music and if price new in 2021 I've seen it for 279 made in China. This is also Chinese, this is the Scarlatti but is sold under various brand names including Trinity College, Boringwood, AD and sells for around about £319 in 2021. At the back here we have the Stagi W15 made in Italy nowadays by Bruna Musica but like all the others marketed under various names and have seen this sold for around about 579 new. And finally, the Stagi W15LN, costing around 700 This particular one was sold and badged as Gremlin. We showed these in detail in part one of that video, and the construction, the materials used, and the quality of design. Now we're going to show you what can be done to improve them. I set out to be objective about these instruments but unfortunately it wasn't long before I found that there were a lot of faults. So let's have a look. The Stefanelli, as said before, has very widely spaced buttons, levers that have too much side play allowing the pads to leak, springs were very heavy, and the reeds particularly were very badly set. They were very badly set on most of these, in fact. The bellows are made using artificial fabric, plastic material, uh, which tends to disintegrate, as we showed you, causing the gussets to turn into nothing but a neck curtain. The Scarlatti has a similar construction, also has waxed on reeds like the Stefanelli, and the build quality again leaves a bit to be desired the design is not good and the materials the bellows the gussets that's the white areas here again had completely disintegrated the outside material was originally a plastic material and that had split so allowing air loss at every point the stagy w15 has similar action and therefore the same problems. The reeds on these, again, very badly set, but here they're held on with screws and not wax, so it does make it slightly easier to deal with. Also, the bellows are leather, so you're not going to get quite the same problems as you do with the cheaper Chinese models. My guess is that the Chinese models were copied from the Stagi models and if there are any faults in the Stagi they're replicated in the Scarlatti and the Stefanelli. Finally the Stagi W15LN has an improved action. Uh, unfortunately it's really quite noisy. There's no kind of bushing fabric which would have been a, an enormous improvement but nonetheless, we'll show you what we've, what we've done to them. One thing we've done, first thing we did in fact, the screws were very, very tight in the woodwork. 
so we've enlarged the holes for these screws the self-tapping screws but seem to work okay Like all these four concertinas, the pads, it's these little discs of cardboard and leather, sometimes it's a synthetic, they were stuck directly to the levers. So there's a huge amount of glue which doesn't allow any flexibility. So when there is a bit of movement in the levers, the pads would simply leak. So what I've done here is to remove huge amounts of hard hot glue that they'd used in the factory and replace it with a smaller amount of glue and a thin leather disc that if I would press one of these levers you'll see that there's a little bit of movement now. What we've also done is to enlarge the air hole which was ridiculously small that so meant re-angling the air key and more importantly, what we've done is to alter the shape of the springs so that they're now, instead of being straight, they're slightly curved over, which in effect has made the arm with the hook on it slightly shorter, which provides less leverage on these buttons so that they're not as firm, particularly the inside ones the C row and the inside, the G row, much softer. But because the levers are shorter, as the button goes down, it's compressing this rubber tube. So inevitably there will be a fair bit of resistance on this rubber tube. But we've improved things enormously just by doing that. Another thing we've done is to put a small amount of glue just between the lever and the bottom of the button bracket where the lever goes through this slot in this piece of aluminium held onto the button. That stops the button moving along the lever but still allows the flexibility that you need. Otherwise what happens is that when the button is pushed down and the lever goes down the button tends to slide along the lever and as it comes up it jams on the ends. What we've also done to the ends is countersunk them so that when it comes to lining the ends back again, lining everything up, then it should be much easier. This is a repair on the action that will be needed or can be improved on on all these three. And it should solve the problem of sticking or heavy buttons. What I'm also showing you here is that in the first part of the video we showed you huge gaps underneath the reeds. This would mean the reeds would be very slow to respond, sound very breathy and you'd probably just not want to play the thing. Now it's easy enough to squash these down a bit and close that gap up until you get it just right. It's time consuming, fiddly and skill job. Um, but it's messy because you've got to prise off the reed to get to the pull reed and each reed plate will need removing. Now once you've got them playing nicely they'll need tuning. Tuning's a skilled job but if you've got to re-wax the reeds every time you do any maintenance and that's in this case all of the reeds have been removed and re-waxed then it's a time consuming and messy job. The advantage with these two is that the reeds are screwed on. It's still a time consuming job to remove the reeds, to reset them, to replace any valves, to tune them, uh, but it's less messy. So don't buy a concertina with waxed on reeds. The other thing is that on, all th on three of these concertinas there were wrong notes, which is not going to help if you're a beginner. So we've had to tune those or turn reeds over that were put on wrongly. Finally with the Stefanelli what we've done is to cover the little 
gussets that were a, a plastic material with a very thin leather that fits exactly over them and what we have now is leather gussets throughout which means you have airtight bellows. Don't buy a concertina that doesn't have leather bellows. This is the Scarlatti we showed you before. We didn't show you the original bellows because it wouldn't have been possible to have, have shown you because they were so leaky. The original gussets here were a plasticized material which we showed you which just stretches, breaks up and the air comes out like it's a net curtain. So what we've done here is to completely replace the gussets and the edge strips and the end strips to make a decent set of bellows and of course airtight. The thing about the Stagy made concertinas is we showed you the bellows before, they had a few holes in the corners, but being leather, you can repair these relatively easily. Even this one, once the sticky tape was removed, uh, we refinished it and it's not looking too bad at the moment. These have all been repaired now to, as well as the design will allow, uh, with a few minor tweaks here and there. So at least you can hear what they sound like and at least hear what they should have sounded like had they been made properly. within the constraints of the design plus the fact that we've made a few improvements um, and what we have is the Stefanelli probably has the sweetest sound the Scarlatti is probably the loudest however both of these have waxed on reeds and bellows that are going to disintegrate with the Stagy more expensive this is the quietest instrument the, the metal ended Stagy this has got the best action but unfortunately it's very noisy. All the buttons rattle around with a traditionally made concertina then where the levers go through the stem of the button there's a lining of bushing fabric and quite often there's a bushing felt around the ends uh, on the ends around the button all of which would have made for a much quieter sound. So pros and cons that's about it. We've spent a lot of time repairing these and it's been totally uneconomical. <laughs> um, they're just not very well constructed. The materials used, certainly in the Chinese ones, are pretty poor. And would I recommend anyone buys one? No. And would I recommend anyone buys a better one that's still a Chinese made one or has waxed on reeds? forget it. Come and see us, try a few different instruments, particularly traditional ones, so you're not going to waste your money on an entry-level concertina that, after all, if you buy an entry-level concertina and it's full of faults and you sell it, you're just passing on the same problems to somebody else. That's not really fair either. So come and see us. We're happy to quote for repairs on traditional instruments, but please don't bring us any more of these.